Hello all and welcome to Miss Martin's Classroom. Today's podcast will be featuring a realistic fiction young adult novel. If you like poetry that brings up real issues and raw emotions, this book might appeal to you. The poetry is written in such a way as to mimic actual people thinking and talking, which makes the language relatable and easy enough to understand. This book has a special place close to my heart. It was recommended to me by my dear friend a couple years ago, and it did not disappoint. A beautiful and realistic story written by a teacher who did not see her students or their cultures reflected accurately and sufficiently in literature. Giamara Batista, a fierce Latina from Harlem, struggles to find her voice and love herself until she discovers the power of poetry. Part 1. In the beginning was the word. Friday, August 24th. Stoop sitting. The summer is made for stoop sitting. And, since it's the last week before school starts, Harlem is opening its eyes to September. I scope out this block I've always called home. Watch the old church ladies, chancletas flapping against the pavement, their mouths letting loose a train of island Spanish as they spread he said, she said. Peep papote from down the block as he opens the fire hydrant so the little kids have a sprinkler to run through. Listen to honking cabs with bachata blaring from their open windows, complete with basketballs echoing from the little park. Laugh at the viejos, my father not included, finishing their dominoes tournaments with hard slaps. Shake my head as even the drug dealers posted up near the building smile more in the summer, their hard scowls softening into glue-eyed stares in the direction of the girls in summer dresses and short shorts. Ayo, Ziamara! You need to start wearing dresses like that. Shit, you'd be wiped up before going back to school. Especially knowing you church girls are all freaks. But I ignore their taunts. Enjoy this last bit of freedom. And wait for the long shadows to tell me when mommy is almost home from work. When it's time to sneak upstairs. Unhideable. I am unhideable. Taller than even my father with what mommy has always said, was a little too much body for such a young girl. I am the baby fat that settled into D-cups and swinging hips, so the boys who called me a whale in middle school now ask me to send them pictures of myself in a thong. The other girls call me conceited. Ho, thought, fast. When your body takes up more room than your voice, you are always the target of well-aimed rumors, which is why I let my knuckles talk for me which is why I learned to shrug when my name was replaced by insults. I've forced my skin just as thick as I am. Mira Muchacha Mira Muchacha is mommy's favorite way to start a sentence, and I know I've already done something wrong when she hits me with a Look, girl. This time it's Mira Muchacha. Marina from across the street told me you were on the stoop again talking to Los Vendedores. Like usual, I bite my tongue and don't correct her because I hadn't been talking to the drug dealers. They'd been talking to me. But she says she doesn't want any conversation between me and those boys or any boys at all, and she better not hear about me hanging out like a wet shirt on a clothesline just waiting to be worn, or she would go ahead and be the one to wring my neck. Oiste? she asks, but walks away before I can answer. Sometimes I want to tell her, the only person in this house who isn't heard is me. Names I'm the only one in the family without a biblical name. Shit, Siamara isn't even Dominican. I know because I googled it. It means, one who is ready for war. And truth be told, that description is about right, because I even tried to come into this world in a fighting stance. Feet first. Had to be cut out of mommy after she'd given birth to my twin brother, Javier, just fine. And my name labors out of some people's mouths in that same awkward and painful way until I have to slowly say, C-O-M-A-R-A. I've learned not to flinch the first day of school as teachers get stuck stupid trying to figure it out. Mommy says she always thought it was a saint's name, gave me this gift of battle, and now curses how well I live up to it. My parents probably wanted a girl who would sit in the pews wearing pretty florals and a soft smile, 
They got combat boots and a mouth silent until it's sharp as an island machete. The first words. Pero tu no eres fácil is a phrase I've heard my whole life. When I come home with my knuckles scraped up, pero tu no eres fácil. When I don't wash the dishes quickly enough or when I forget to scrub the tub, pero tu no eres fácil. Sometimes it's a good thing. When I do well on an exam or the rare time I get an award, pero tu no eres fácil. When my mother's pregnancy was difficult and it was all because of me, because I was turned around and they thought that I would die, or worse, that I would kill her. So they held a prayer circle at church and even Father Sean showed up in the emergency room. Father Sean, who held my mother's hand as she labored me into the world, and Poppy paced behind the doctor, who said this was the most difficult birth she'd ever been a part of. But... Instead of dying, I came out wailing, waving my tiny fists, and the first thing Poppy said, the first words I ever heard, Pero, tu no eres fácil. You sure aren't an easy one. Mommy works. Cleaning an office building in Queens. Rides two trains in the early morning so she can arrive at the office by eight. She works at sweeping and mopping, emptying trash bins and... Being invisible. Her hands never stop moving, she says. Her fingers rubbing the material of plastic gloves, like the pages of her well-worn Bible. Mommy rides a train in the afternoon, another hour and some change to get to Harlem. She says she spends her time reading verses, getting ready for the evening mass. And I know she ain't lying. But if it were me, I'd prop my head against the metal train wall, hold my purse tight in my lap close my eyes against the rocking, and try my best to dream. We follow Zia Mara in an authentic portrayal of her challenges as a Latina woman and misunderstood youth in The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is one book you will not want to miss, and this is truly a series you can simply sink your teeth into. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out my hashtag MSM ready to read and follow me on Instagram at ms underscore martins underscore class for more new books and fun lessons that are sure to engage you and your kiddos. Be sure to tune in next week for my next Book Talk Tuesday podcast. And please comment below if you read this book or another book by the author. Thanks for watching.